Hello friends, good day. In today's uh, video blog, I'll be discussing the ninth program, which is write a C, C++ program to implement the system function. Now, what is a system function? If we go to the seventh program, which we had already discussed, we had used this function called a system. And we had used this function to execute a particular command, which we are going to pass to a system system call as string. Now similarly we need to implement this particular function. To implement this particular function we need to understand the working of uh, system system call and with the help of a small uh, PowerPoint presentation I am going to explain you how system system call works. Now we have a process which is process 1 in this diagram. We have this process process 1 and this process forks to create a new process which is a child process and that child process is a replica of the parent process. Now uh, to create a system system call system we can change the image of this particular child process by calling a particular system call called as exec. Exec when I do that exec the process 2 which was the child of process 1 will remain the child of process 1 but it is no more the replica of process 1 it is some other process with a different image. In this case we are replacing it with an image of bash or the shell. Now shell can easily execute any command that is given to it. This is the overall idea of how exactly a system system call works. Now we will look into the program we have this main function and in this main function we are calling system what and we are calling system my system who my system is a user defined function which we have defined here inside my system i am creating a child process using fork the value pid is nothing but the value of child process ID inside parent and inside child the value of PID is uh, naturally 0. I need not have to tell you, you already are aware of it. So when it is 0, what I am trying to do is I will try to replace the image of the parent process with that of shell. Now to explain you the syntax of EXCCL, the first parameter is the path. The second parameter is the command itself. The third parameter onwards, it is the arguments. The last one is the null, indicating that is the end of the argument. Okay. So this is the syntax of EXCCL. The first parameter is the path where the executable file is available. The second parameter is the name of the executable file. The third parameter here is minus C. Minus C is a switch which is used along with SH. I will simply say man sh and you can see uh, if I go to the um, number of what are the switches available there is something called as minus c and this minus c is a switch which is used by the sh command to indicate that the input that is given to the uh, sh is in the form of a string. So that is the very meaning of sh. Now. Um, the command the command string which is the which is nothing but a string is passed here and the last parameter is null which is nothing but the end of the number of arguments. The image of the parent process is changed and now it is bash and that bash executes a new command. Exit 127 is the status that is returned to the parent process if it was unable to execute a particular command. When you when when is that you cannot execute a particular command? You cannot execute a particular command when such a kind such a kind of a command which you present to the shell is not existing. So we have what and we have who. What is an invalid command? Who is a valid command? So we'll try to execute this program and see how it works. GCC nine system dot c dot slash a dot out. You can see who what not found who is found and we are able to print the output of who. So this is the uh, ninth program. I am hoping you have understood this. 
For any queries, you can mail me at aditya.b at jyotiit.org. Thank you.